Let's examine activities, arguments, and the app processes. Activities typically need to pass data from one to another. When one activity starts another, it's common to pass arguments. For example, in any master details setup like this one from the contacts app, the master contact list activity starts the contact details activity. When requesting the detail activity, the master activity will pass in the chosen item ID so the appropriate item is displayed. In other cases, the actual data gets sent rather than an ID number. For example, when launching the Compose email activity, you can pass a list of addresses, a subject, body text, etc. The Compose email activity reads the values and uses them to pre-populate the email editor. In this case, the to address field is pre-populated with the new email from the contact details. Each app runs in its own process, contacts, mail, phone, etc., and each has its own Linux process at runtime. This is true even when apps collaborate. For example, suppose the contacts app is running and user touches a phone number. Android checks if the phone app is already running. If not, the phone app process is started to make the phone call. Each app is going to run in its own process. Within an app, each activity runs in its parent's app's process. For example, suppose a user is working in the contacts app. If she only uses activities from the contacts app, execution stays within the contacts process. If instead the user taps a phone number from the contact details, the phone app is started in its own process to host the requested dialer activity. In this example, the contacts information moves between processes, from the contact details in the contacts app process to the phone activity in the phone app process. When we are launching activities, only simple types and serialized objects can be passed between activities, even activities within the same app. We'll look at this in more detail next.